Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me. My name is Greg Stafford, and these are Day Texts, where we meet every weekday morning at 5 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, unless otherwise scheduled, uh, to consider a portion of the biblical record, uh, sometimes related ancient histories or other sources of wisdom that we can use throughout our day or evening and share with others to help them as well. So we're working our way through the New Testament and we're in the uh, letter to Timothy, the first letter written by the Apostle Paul uh, to the Christian Timothy about things that he should be aware of, how he could assist others in the first century Christian congregations, and with regard to various other teachings and um, beliefs. So I'm going to read today 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through 10, and then we'll make a brief application and we'll be on our way. All right, so 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through 10 reads, Yet it is a great way to profit, that is, God's way, with basic human essentials. For we carried nothing into the world, nor are we able to carry anything out of the world. That's a text I alluded to uh, a couple days ago when discussing another text. All right, verse 8. But having nourishing food and protective clothing, with these things we will be at peace, or content, happy, satisfied. Verse 9. However, those who intend to be rich fall into temptation then into a trap, as well as many envious feelings, hurtful and ignorant, which drag people down into destruction and absolute ruin. Verse 10, last verse, for the source of all bad things is the love of money, because of which certain people who long for money were deceived away from the faith, and with many pains they hurt themselves. So we've all, we've all no doubt heard uh, the saying in verse 10. Usually it's um, the uh, money is the root of all evil, but it's really the love of money. And so we need money. In fact, you're going to find out tomorrow in tomorrow's day text. He talks, he addresses those who are rich in the, in the time that he's writing. So it's not a question of whether or not people can be rich. And be a Christian, it's difficult. Even Jesus said it'd be more difficult for a man who was rich to get through the eye of a sewing needle than to enter the kingdom of heaven. It's very difficult because you end up devoting your time and energies to your resources or your wealth versus to job. But you can do it if you have many material things and you're able to balance your life and to give job praise and not allow your material possessions to distract you then you can do it. And that's why tomorrow in tomorrow's text you'll see, uh, or actually I guess it will be Monday's text since uh, tomorrow's Saturday. And we're taking off tomorrow, by the way, for the CW Jaw Talk Show. I'll talk, talk about that more in a moment. But um, back to this idea of money. So you can be rich, but it's very difficult to maintain your wealth and to pursue wealth and to pursue praising Jaw, right? And even Jesus said, you cannot slave for God and for riches. You cannot slave for both because you would not be able to give Jah his due. But we do work hard. I mean, I work in, in the jobs that I have. I work the majority of my day. And that's why I spend my time in the morning, sometimes in the evening, trying to get to praising Jah and to sharing with others the things that I have learned and that they can use to praise Jah as well. And so we each have to assess our own circumstances and situation so that we can best determine whether or not we are, we are giving our, our, our whole soul, our best, to Jah and following Jesus versus to someone else, right? We're either giving our best to Jah or we're giving our best to some human. And while we do want to work whole soul to Jah and give our best to humans in that way, Jah is more important. You know, Jah should be your driving motivation. Doing things whole sold to him so that we get praise from others that we then can redirect back to God. 
Okay, so let's take a, a look at a couple other points here. Let's go back to verse 7. We carried nothing into the world, and nor are we able to carry anything out. I talked about this the other day when I mentioned the evil gods, and I specifically mentioned the gods of Egypt, and how, and that's not just the gods of Egypt, but they really just um, misled an entire culture into thinking that they would be able to live on in the afterlife with all of their possessions and special creatures even, and yet they were not because those tombs have been broken open, robbed, and all of the treasures stolen. And the bones and the mummies, they're still there unless they've been stolen already. And that's why Jesus says, do not store up treasure on the earth where moth and rust, rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. Put your treasure in the heavens where no one can steal it and where it will be safe forever. All right, so we've carried nothing into the world. We came in naked, we're gonna leave naked. I guarantee you that. So why pursue everything as if it's everything when really it's nothing because we cannot take it with us? Remember what Jesus said, who of you would give your life in exchange for the world or give the world in exchange for your soul I should say so why pursue the entire world right why pursue all of the wealth authority and power of the world when you would just end up giving it up for one more day of life if on your last day you knew this was your last day let's say you, you hypothetically your last day is here and you have control over the entire world, all of the authority, glory, power, and riches. And Jah says you give all of that up. And you will live another full day beyond today. What would you do? Would you die that day just so you could die in control of the world, knowing the second you die, you lose control of everything? Or would you give up the entire world and all of its power, authority, and riches for one more day? I guarantee you every single one of us would. Because what would be the, what would be the value of having the entire world and then losing it before that other day even gets here? So the value would only be in that following day because you're not going to have anything, not even another day, if you don't take it. So Jesus, as usual, makes things so simple because he understands what's going on and he's been teaching us the whole time. All right, so we know that the things we really need are just nourishing food and protective clothing, like verse 8 says. It's nice to have nice things. I like nice things. We're in a world where we have to, we have to work and we're a part of the commerce system to where we use money and resources to exchange versus goodwill. Well, likely the way Job would have intended it. So Job permits us to exist and to transact within this system because it's the system in place uh, for the time being. But, you know, if your intent is to be rich, if you're going to put all your time, effort, and, and, and spirit into being rich, just remember, everything you accumulate stays right here, but not you. You and me leave every single thing we've accumulated behind when our last day arrives. So exactly how much value could it really have? It has value while we're here. We know that. We know that. Think long term. Look into the future if you can and see what's coming. Every single person who has ever lived has died. We're the next group. Okay, so what you do now is all that matters in your life. I highly recommend you use your life to praise Jah, to help other people, make mo what money you have to in order to survive and to take care of yourself. But if you pursue wealth and riches, you're going to give up so many opportunities. And in the end, you cannot take any of the things that you've spent your time and effort accumulating with you. But what you can take with you is your reputation, your name, the love that you showed to other people and to Jah while you were here, that, that goes right with you. And Jah will look at it and see that you spent time doing those things. 
So some good information as always uh, today in today's text. Tomorrow we'll finish up with the letter of 1 Timothy. Um, but these, these verses today I thought uh, grouped well together. So we'll finish up 1 Timothy. I'm sorry, Monday. So tomorrow's Saturday. I'm taking tomorrow off on the CW Jaw Talk shows, but I'm going to go back through them and uh, see what, what clips I might be able to peel off on certain topics. I'm also going to put up some audio from prior uh, debates or shows and things that I've done and um, that I think will be interesting and, and, and that you might all enjoy. But I'm, I'm going to uh, put some pictures and things in with the audio because it's some, some of the audios I have don't have visuals. You know, they're either radio shows or uh, um, just audio discussions. So I'm going to, to put some pictures and things that will help keep it visually interesting while the audio is playing. So in a couple of weeks, I'll have a, a couple, I'll either substitute a CW Jaw Talk show for uh, at least one of the audios that I have in mind, because I think it will provide a good topical discussion and and I think it's something people will will benefit from in that way. So I'll make a show out of it. And then others I might just make separate topical shows out of, depending on, on what I find and how I think it might might help people. So I've got a lot of things coming. I've got some new shows planned. We'll take off tomorrow, and then I'll be back on the 12th with a, a CW Jaw Talk show. I've got a couple great messages planned, but they take a little time. So we'll keep doing our... Um, Day Tech Shows, we'll be back next Monday to finish up 1 Timothy, and then um, we'll work our way into 2 Timothy. So a lot of good stuff ahead. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you for joining me. It's a great way to start our day. I'll post a video here in a few minutes on Bed the Text, and then um, we'll be on our way. So thank you again. Have a wonderful day, and may God bless you. Thank you.